the ashes will take care of what's happening there. You all look here. Looking at me? Amen? Amen. Let's concentrate on God's word. Today is the day of his birth by the assistant. But now he says he's not a child anymore. He's not a baby laying in a manger. He is the king of kings. He is the lord of lords. He is sitting in the right hand of his father. And he is looking down on people that love him. And that hunger and thirst after him. That are not, that are not uh, 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 diverted and, and, and digressed and just uh, uh, because of anything that's happening around them. But their mind is on the Lord. They focus on the Lord. And that's why this day is so, so significant. The birth of Christ is so significant. We need to understand what happened on that day 2,000 years ago when Jesus Christ was born. It was not this day. We all know that. He was not born on December the 25th. We all know that. And the word of God helps us to understand uh, uh, probably when he was born. But surely this is not the day. But the fact is that he was born. He came down to earth. He lived among us for 33 and a half years. He lived as a human. He didn't live, live as an angel. He didn't, he didn't come down as an angelic being. He absolutely took himself. Up, he took upon himself the nature of man. The, the, the form of a human being. And I'd like to tell, tell you today what's so significant about Christ's birth. And I was thinking about all of these things and for the last few days that 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 I, I know you also may have the same answer that I have, but but we may put it we may all put it in different words. We may all put it in different words. But we believe this in our hearts. And I I want to tell you the significance of Christ's birth today. Uh, and what what did he accomplish and what did he do? And what it what now what is that that I should do? What was different? In that first Christmas, you may say Christmas is not the right word. It's okay. As long as Christmas is associated with people, uh, people uh, remembering the birth of Christ, I don't mind using the word Christmas. As long as people understand that a Savior was born this day, I don't mind using the word Christmas. For that matter, the word pastor is not in the Bible. Do you, do you use the word pastor? You'll be amazed the word pastor is not in the Bible. The word is shepherd. The King James translators translated it as, it as pastor. But we use the word. It's okay. There's no, nothing wrong in that. There's nothing wrong in that. So no, there's nothing wrong in using the word Christmas. As long as you are not swayed away, away by, by the worldly traditions of Christmas. As long as you, are, you know what Christmas means and you value that. You value the birth of the Son of God. And why he came down to earth. Why did he live among us? What did he accomplish? And as you may be aware of this, the most it's the most amazing fact in the world. If you think about this, the whole world makes time or marks time according to the first Christmas. The calendar changed after the first Christmas. Even our history books the whole world, they talk about so many years before Christ, right? BCE. Now they call it the before common era. That is okay, but 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 that that when the word BCE comes, they always go back to the time before Christ was born. And so many years AD. AD doesn't mean after death. AD doesn't mean after death. AD means Anno Domini. Anno Domini is a Latin word which means the day of our Lord. The day of our Lord. Everyone say the day of our Lord. The day of our Lord. It was the day our Lord was born. It is the day of our Lord. And, and then it, it is not after death. If it was after death, then there would have been a 33 and a half year gap in the calendar because Jesus lived for 33 and a half years and he died. So AD is not after death. AD is Anno Domini. That means the day of our Lord. And and it is, sorry, the year of our Lord. I'm sorry if I said the day. It's the year of our Lord. It's the year in which our Lord was born. Now, we are in the 2022nd year of our Lord. 
2022nd year of our Lord. It's amazing. So what's so significant about Christmas? Is it the family time? Is it the gifts? Is it the presents? Is it the is it the um, sweets you all make? Is it the faral? Is it the cake you all make? What 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 is so significant about Christmas? Is it is it eating and drinking? What's the reason for this season? I was talking to Brother and Sister Senji yesterday and they told me to tell the church, don't forget the reason for the season. It's not eating and drinking and making merry and, and, and distributing sweets and giving gifts. It's okay. Please do that. Don't stop it. It's always good to give gifts unless you're not in debt. It's good to give gifts and good to help the poor and the, uh, and the needy people. It's, it's always good. So please do that. But what? What is what is what is uh, what is the real significant of this day? What's so amazing about this day? Uh, before this, let me tell you one more thing. There's a prophecy in Isaiah. Uh, Isaiah is one of the books in the Bible that has most of the messianic prophecies. When I say messianic prophecies, it means the prophecies relating to the Christ. Messianic Messiah it comes from the word Messiah. It comes from the word the Christ. So Isaiah has a lot of prophecies concerning the Messiah. And this is the time when Syria was besieging Judah. And, uh, and Isaiah gives the uh, king Ahaz, a very ungodly king, he gives king Ahaz this, this, this word. And um, Syria was besieging, that was, it, was, it was coming and, and attacking Judah from all sides. It was coming and laying a siege uh, around Judah. And uh, Isaiah, the man of God, the prophet of God, goes to king Ahaz and tells him, don't worry, nothing will happen. But, but, but King Ahaz had a different motive. See, he didn't trust God. He already had made a coalition with the king of Assyria. And he said that it's okay, even if the people go in bondage, you let me free. Let me free, but let the people go in bondage. But here Isaiah, let's turn to Isaiah chapter 7. I'm coming to the significance of this day, but I'm just giving you this this thought as we pass by here in Isaiah chapter 7 and verse 10. Moreover the Lord spoke unto Ahaz saying, Ask thee a sign of the Lord thy God. Ask it either in the depth or in the height above. So Isaiah said, Ask a sign. You ask a sign uh, that, uh, that the Lord is with you. The Lord will show. And Ahaz said, I will not ask. Neither will I, will I tempt the Lord. See how spiritual he sounds? Oh, I don't want to tempt the Lord. I don't want to ask. Uh, ask the Lord uh, what is right and what is not right. I don't want to tempt. I know what the Lord wants me to do. And he has, he has is, is trying to act a little spiritual here. And here it says in uh, in verse uh, 12, But he has said, I will not ask, neither will I tempt the Lord. And he said, Hear ye now, O house of David. Is it a small thing for you to weary men? But will you weary my God also? Uh, and he says in verse 14, Therefore the Lord himself shall give you a sign. You don't want a sign, the Lord will give you a sign. What will be the sign? All of a sudden, out of the blue, Isaiah is talking about a virgin conceiving. Now what does this relate to the thing that's happening there? How does this relate? How does a virgin giving birth to a child relate to Syria besieging Judah? What's the significance? Uh, was Isaiah really speaking on God's behalf or was he just murmuring something that came to his mouth? What, what was he doing? And, and here he says, Therefore the Lord himself shall give you a sign. Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son and shall call his name Emmanuel. This is where the angel even quotes the same thing in, in, in Matthew. When he comes to Isaiah and says, He shall be called Emmanuel. That is God with us. So Isaiah tells him, Don't worry. Nothing is going to happen. And he has tries to sound spiritual and say, Oh, I don't want to tempt the Lord. I don't want to test the Lord. See, he did not say this because he really was, was seeking after the Lord. He did not say this because he didn't want to test God. He has said this because he didn't want to trust God. Sometimes we have to test the Lord to trust Him. And he has didn't, didn't say, didn't mean, really mean, oh, I don't want to test the Lord. I don't know, no, no. He knew once God gives him a word, he has to be faithful to that word. 
and says God gives us his word and it's our job to be faithful to that word to obey that word to keep that word but Ahaz didn't want to obey the word of God he didn't want to test the Lord he didn't want to to keep that word because if God gives us a word we are responsible to keep that word and to trust him for that word so he didn't even want to receive the word of the Lord Ahaz said no I didn't want but Isaiah was was, was so much of led by the Spirit, but he said, Isaiah said in verse 14, Therefore the Lord himself, the Lord himself shall give thee a sign. And he said something that was about to happen about 735 years later. Now this prophecy that Isaiah gave about a virgin conceiving came to pass 735 years after Isaiah said this. So it was not in a distant future. It did happen next year. It didn't happen two years. So, 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 so can you think why this prophecy given at this time? What connection does it have here? All of a sudden Isaiah talks about a virgin conceived. How was that assigned to Ahaz? How was that assigned to Judah? Let me tell you how. In fact, this is a sign for every generation. Even for us today, it's a sign. It's a sign for every generation. So we need to, we need to understand I, Israel had had the promise that Messiah will be born. Israel knew that the Messiah was to come from the tribe of Judah. Messiah was to be born and he was from, to be from the house of David. But the Messiah was still not being, still not born. He was still to come. And Isaiah said, God has a purpose for you, Ahaz. God has a purpose for Judah. God has a purpose for Israel. And as long as that purpose is not fulfilled, the enemy cannot do anything to you. God has a purpose for Israel to stay as a nation, to come out of all trials, to come out of all captivity, because the Messiah has to be born in the nation of Israel. He has to come from the tribe of Judah. And as long as God has a purpose for you, the enemy cannot defeat you. And he has just had to trust the word of God. But he didn't trust. And he just gave up the wonderful promise that God had for he has at that time. And since even for us today, Messiah is coming back. Amen. The king of kings is coming back. And God has a purpose for every one of you sitting here. Every one of you sitting here, every one of your children sitting here, God has a purpose. Every one of you elderly saints sitting here, God has a purpose. And as long as God fulfills his purpose in your life, the enemy cannot take you out. Do you trust him? Do you trust the Lord? That the Lord has a purpose for you, that's why you are here today. And there's a purpose for everything that God brings your way. It makes me willing to do His will. Amen. That's why I'll be, I'll strive and I'll be ready. And through its trial, I'll be steady. I won't be moved because I know God has a purpose for me. I won't be moved because I know God has a purpose for my children. I won't be moved. I shall not be, I shall not be moved. Don't you forget there was a message by the saint he gave about a green olive plant. I am like a green olive plant planted in the, in the house of God by God himself. And nothing in this world can move me because God has a purpose for me. And Saint Israel as a nation was destroyed many times, many times overtaken, many times they were scattered. The nation was just was just wilderness for, for almost 1,500 years. There was nothing but rocks and thorns and thistles. Nothing. No one lived in that land. But you know what? God's purpose was yet to be fulfilled. Jesus had to come back. His feet had to touch the Mount of Olives. He has to sit and rule from the throne of his father David. And all of a sudden, in 1914, in 1917, the whenever the Balfour Declaration, and in 1948, when Israel came to birth as a nation, and in 1967, Jerusalem was annexed with Israel, and, and, and Jerusalem was won in the Seven Day War, the nation came back into existence out of nothing. Out of nothing, because God has a purpose for Israel. God has a purpose for that nation. 
nation. The Messiah is going to come back to Israel. The law shall go forth from Jerusalem. And Jerusalem will be the first holy city in this whole earth. And as long as God has a purpose for you, my dear friends, the devil can't take you out. This is good news. I'm giving you good news. I'm giving you something that you can lay hold of your entire life. And you can fight all the battles. You can live through all the trials. You can stay faithful through all the ups and downs. And because you know that God has a purpose for your life. Let's, let not, let's not forget that sense. The good news is Satan can't take you out of this place. He cannot take you out of the church. The bad news is I can get out of this church. Satan cannot. Whoever have gone out of this church saints is not because of Satan took them. It's because they themselves have decided they don't want to live here. Because others also face the same problem but they didn't leave the church. And even, even if they left, they came back. I have to decide. I take myself. If Jesus said no one can pluck them out of my hand. And no one can pluck them out of my father's hand. No one. But that doesn't mean I can't jump out of that hand. I can. But nobody else can take me out of my father's hand. Because there's a purpose for my life. And when I'm weak. When I'm tempted. When I'm under attack, I can do something that will take me away from God and His purpose and His presence from my life. The good news is Satan can't take you out. Satan can't take me out. So this prophecy tells us that though the enemy will come raging against us, again Brother Sinji gave us a scripture, that the, the enemy shall rise up against you as a flood. As what? As, as little trickles of water? No. When the enemy shall come against thee as a flood, what will happen? If you stay grounded, if you don't leave your place, who will help you? The Spirit of the Lord shall raise up a standard against the enemy. Can we believe that, saints? Do we trust the word of the Lord? We can absolutely live our life trusting God's word. And saints, Jesus is not come yet. He is not come yet. So what's so significant? About, about this day, about Christ's birth. Let's come back to the lesson. That was just a detour. The second, the second, the most significant thing here is in, in Matthew chapter one. When I read this, 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 this passage of scripture. See God coming down in human flesh. God becoming human. God became man. When I say God became man, it's not God the Father. It's God the Son. Is Jesus. He is the Son of God. He was God. Because the scripture in Hebrew chapter 1 says, The Lord said unto my Lord. Both. There are, there are two persons. Distinct persons in the Godhead. There is not two in one. There are two distinct persons. The Father said, The Son said, The Father is greater than me. He is greater than me. That, that's that's another, another uh, topic for another time. But here, the Son of God becomes the Son of Man. And this is why the whole world counted down to Christ and now they have counted upwards from Christ when he was born. The calendar changed. Times changed. The law uh, gave way to grace. And mercy there was great and grace was free. And pardon there was multiplied to me. And there my burdened soul found liberty. A Calvary was possible because Bethlehem made it possible. And where else could, have, could the Lamb of God be born other than Bethlehem? Because Bethlehem was a city that provided lambs for the temple sacrifice. He had to be born in Bethlehem. Bethlehem is a house of bread, yes. But Bethlehem is also the city which provided lambs for the temple sacrifice. And the Lamb of God was born in Bethlehem. God was telling the world, this is my Lamb. This is my Lamb I have chosen. 
And this is the spotless land that I will be offering after 33 and a half years. And here in Matthew, some people say Jesus is a good man, he is a prophet, uh, he, is a, he, is, he, is, he, he was a he was a good man, but he was not the son of God. He's a prophet. You know, this, 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 this kind of heresy started right in the first century. People thought that Jesus was not born in the flesh. Some people thought, oh no, he was really not scourged at Calvary. He was not. He didn't go through all that process of being flogged and the crown of thorns. It's all man-made stories. It all started 50, 60 years after Calvary. And even today, People point a finger at the deity of Christ. They point the finger at the, uh, at, the, at the virgin birth of Christ, at the immaculate conception of Christ. And people say he's a good man. But let's look at here in Matthew chapter 1. And uh, uh, here it's, it's Joseph. Um, was 18. Now the birth of Jesus Christ was in this wise when as his mother Mary was espoused to Joseph. Behold, therefore they came... Together she was found with child of the Holy Ghost. And Joseph, a just man, not willing to make her a public example, was minded to put away privily. But while he thought on these things, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, the son of David. See, Joseph was from the house of David. The Messiah had to be born in the house of David. Joseph is called the son of David. Fear not to take thee unto Mary thy wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Ghost. It's of the Holy Ghost, and she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call him Jesus. The meaning of Jesus, Jesus is a, the Hebrew word is Yeshua. It means the Savior. His name means Savior, and it says, for he shall save his people from their poverty, from their troubles, from their headache, from their cancer, but he shall save his people from what? He shall save his people from something that no one else would save them. And that is their sin. Can you all say amen? amen. Are you all sleepy? Not yet. I don't intend to put you all to sleep so soon. But he says he shall save his people from their Sins. The Hebrew said the blood of bulls and goats could never take away sin. It is to just cover the sin. But the blood of Jesus washes away my sin. What can wash away my sins? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Who can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Oh precious is the flow that makes me white as snow. See, it's the Savior to save us from our sin. We expect Him to save us from our poverty and our sickness. We, just ex we limit Jesus' saving power to only earthly things. But since He's come to save your soul. Come on, come on, saints. Let's, let's, ex let's, let's experience salvation. He came to save our soul from the depths of the grave. He came, us to, he came down to this earth to lift us up from the muck and the mire of sin. And that's something amazing. Nothing, it, it, it had never happened in the 4,000 years before Christ. Never ever, there was no man who could take away the sins of this world. But God so loved this world that he gave. He gave his only begotten son. The greatest gift was received 2,000 years ago. The greatest gift God gave this earth and mankind was 2,000 years ago in a little manger in Bethlehem where the son of God took, form, took the form of a man. God became man. And Jesus was not just a good man. He was not just a prophet. But he was the son of God himself. Jesus himself makes this statement here in Matthew chapter 16. He wants to clear the air. Even at that time, 
people doubted the uh, the 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 the, uh, the, 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 uh, the existence of Christ. Even at that time, people never believed that he was the Son of God. Even at that time, people never believed he was the Messiah. And that's why in Matthew 16, Jesus comes to in verse 13. He comes to the coast of Caesarea, Philippi, and he asks the disciples, Whom do men say that I am? Now first he asks them, What do people think about me? And some say, You are John the Baptist. Some say, You are Jeremiah. Some say, You are Isaiah. Or among the prophets. So Jesus turns to them and he asks them, What do you think? Who am I? And this is a question for each and every one of us today. Because the devil is questioning the deity of Christ, even today. And the question is the same for us, whom do we think? Whom do you think? Who am I? And Simon Peter answered, thou art the Christ, the son of the living God. In Matthew, it says, the son of man. In, John, in Matthew 1, he, he came from a mother's womb. He was called the son of man. Jesus uh, always asks, he, he says in, in verse, uh, verse, uh, verse 13, Whom do men say that I, the son of man? See, you can see the son of man here in verse 13. And in verse 16, you see the son of God. You can see both the things. The son of God became the son of man. That's the most significant thing about the birth of Christ. An angel was not born today or 2000 years ago. God himself took the form of a human being. God himself came and spent nine months in the mother's womb. And then was born naturally and raised up naturally by natural parents. So what a, what, what, what a sacrifice. What a sacrifice. Do you, do, you, do you sometimes think about the sacrifice Jesus had to make to be born on this earth? He was fully man and fully God. And this question is relevant even today. What do we tell our friends? Who's Jesus? Just a prophet? Just a good man? Who's he? Who's he? He is the son of God. He was conceived of the Holy Spirit. It's called immaculate conception. Immaculate. Uh, we don't use that word anymore, but it, the word immaculate means pure. Holy, without spot. That is the word immaculate because the seed was holy. The egg was of the woman, but the seed was not of the man. There was no human seed in Mary's womb. The seed was God's seed. It came from the Holy Spirit. There was no human intervention in the birth of Christ except the womb of Mary. And that's why he can be fully human and fully God. The deity and the humanity of Christ. God became man. God transfused himself into, into, into a human being. That's the most significant thing about Christ's birth. No other religion. I, use, I, I don't really like the word religion. Because religion is man's attempt to reach to God. Christianity is God's attempt to reach to man. Let's get this right. Religion is not the right word. Religion is, there are many religions. And what is religion? Religion is man's attempt. They want to do everything to reach to God. But what's Christianity? It's God attempt, God's attempt to reach to man. That's what makes the difference. And 2,000 years ago, God reached to us. God reached to us. The distance was traveled by God himself. 1,500 years earlier, the birth of Christ, God told Moses, build a tabernacle for me. I want to come and dwell. But that was not the manifest presence. That was just the spirit of the law that dwelt in the tabernacle. But 2,000 years ago, we had the manifest presence of God walking this earth in Shulam. God walked this earth. Amen. Amen. God walked this earth. He left his heavenly abode. He gave up. His glory. 
And he came and walked the dusty streets of Israel. He said, I have no pillow to lay my head on. He laid his head on a stone. He slept out in the open so many nights. The Son of God became the Son of Man so that we sons of men can become the sons of God. Amen. What a sacrifice. We only talk about the sacrifice at Calvary. Oh yes, that is a supreme sacrifice. I'm not denying that. But to be born as a human was sacrifice in itself. The scripture says he made himself lower than the angels. He made himself very lower, saints. Very lower. We people are like the dust and the worms. And he made himself a worm. The king became a worm. For whom? For whom? For us. For our children. He became a worm. He gave up his place. The scripture says he was in the he was he was his father's delight. He was daily his father's delight. He gave up his divinity. He gave up his powers. And he absolutely became like you and me. He was born of an incorruptible seed. Incorruptible seed. The seed was not corrupted. And this happened. And, and, and he said, it's not just for me now. Now I'll even give it to you people. Even to you people. This incorruptible seed, Peter said here in 1 Peter. Let's turn to 1 Peter. And chapter 1. And verse 23. We all, Jesus said, a man must be born again. Without being born of the water and the spirit, he shall in no wise enter the kingdom of heaven. And what happens when we, born, when we are born again? What happens when we are born again? How does that birth take place? Let's see what Jesus did for us. Here in 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 23. Being born again. Who? This is us. How are we born again? Being born again, not of corruptible seed. It's not man that gives us the Holy Spirit. It's not your parents that give you the Holy Spirit. It's not your pastor that gives you the Holy Spirit. It's the incorruptible seed that comes from God. When you receive the Holy Spirit, heavenly seed is just sowed into your heart and into your, into your life. It comes from God. It comes from His Spirit itself. It's not a corruptible seed, but as Peter said, not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible seed. By the word of God, which lives and abides forever. Forever. That is what it means, Emmanuel, God with us. When we receive the Holy Spirit, we have Emmanuel. God with us. God with us. Jesus said, I am, now I am with you. Yes, I am with you. But I'm very soon I'm going to be inside of you. My presence will be with you, but it will be not physically with you. It will be spiritually with you, inside of you. And we still can say that Emmanuel, God with us. God with us. He is still there. He is with us. He is with all of his children. He is with all of his children. That's why it's very important. It's very important that he was not born of a, of a, of a corruptible seed. No man was involved in Jesus' birth. The seed of a man uh, makes the woman conceive. That's why it says the iniquity of the fathers. Iniquity of the fathers and not the mothers shall go down to the second and the third generation. Because the seed comes from the father. The husband is responsible. First responsibility is of the husband to keep the family in, 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 intact, intact on the God's heavenly share. It's very, it's very important. So Jesus was fully human and fully God. The deity and the humanity of Christ infused together. 
And this is the most amazing thing about the birth of Christ. No other religion, no other religion can say our founder is God. Think about it. Think about it. Which religion can say our founder is God? All the founders of every religion is a man. But Christ is the founder of Christianity. He came down himself. He came down himself, lived on this earth. He didn't, he, he, he didn't, he didn't enter somebody else. He didn't enter into a body. He came down as a body himself. Let me say this. Jesus did not send a messenger. Jesus brought the message himself. God did not send someone to redeem you. God came down himself to redeem me. God did not send a goat, a lamb, a bull from heaven. Oh, this is a heavenly bull. Huh? It's not an earthly bull. It's not an earthly lamb. This lamb has come down from heaven. It's a four-legged lamb, but it's come down from heaven. So offer this lamb as a sacrifice. It's from my throne, and your sins will be forgiven. Jesus didn't send a four-legged lamb from heaven. Jesus came down himself. He said, I am the lamb of God. He says, crucify me. I am ready to die for you. I am ready to go on that cross for you. I am ready. Many people think, think, that, think that God just dismissed the charge. He just dismissed our sin. He just, he just, he just cancelled our sin. God didn't cancel our sin. God didn't dismiss our sin. I read this story somewhere on the, um, in a magazine a long time. There was a friend, uh, there was a man who's, who got a, who got a speeding ticket on the highway. This happened in the US. He got a speeding ticket on the highway and, and it was, he didn't have the money to pay it. And he had to pay it. So he called one of his friends from the police department and he says, I've got this ticket. Can you use your connections and just cancel the ticket? Cancel the ticket. I mean, just uh, go and tell somebody to just uh, say it was a mistake and cancel the ticket from the system. So his friend did something and, and he got a message that, that, uh, that, that, that there are no tickets on his name. And he called his friend and said, thank you for canceling the ticket. His friend says, what do you mean cancel? Well, you used your connections, right? And you told your boss to cancel the ticket. His friend asked me, asked him, did you, did you really uh, overspeed? Did you really do that, do that on the highway? Did you overspeed? He said, yes. Did you get a fair ticket? He said, yes, it was fair. So why do you think I dismissed the ticket? He says, he said, I paid it for you. I paid it for you. We all had a ticket of sin. We all had a ticket of sin. And God did not dismiss the ticket. God paid it himself. He said, there's no reason for you to pay. Don't pay. I'll become human. I'll live like you live. I'll go through the temptations that you go through. I'll go through the trials that you face. I'll know what hunger is. I'll know what it means when somebody betrays you. I'll, I'll go through all the emotions. I know what it means when someone tells false things against you. When someone criticizes you, when people ignore you, Jesus said, I'll go through all, all the trials and temptations that you go through. I won't dismiss your ticket. I'll live like you. And he said, I, and he said I'll, I'll not just live like you, but I'll die for you. For him to die, he had to be born. That's what makes this day so, so, so significant. God became man. He paid our debts himself. 
I owed a debt I could not pay. He paid a debt he, could not, he did not owe. I needed someone to take my sins away. And now I sing a brand new song, Amazing Grace. Christ Jesus paid a debt that I could never pay. God became man, and for that he had to be born, as I said. He had to be born. His life was dependent on other people. Imagine the creator becoming the creation. Can you imagine the one who created human beings, created the earth and the universe and the heavens, is now dependent on human beings as a baby? He was dependent on his parents, on his mother, on his father, on his mother to feed him milk and food, on his father to put clothes on his body, on his father to live under his roof. He was dependent, he was dependent, he grew up like that. He went to school, he, he knew what it means when friends spoke bad, evil against him, when his brothers and sisters told his parents lies about, oh, I didn't do it, Jesus did it. Oh, I didn't break this. Jesus broke this. You want to say all these things didn't happen in Joseph's house? That Jesus had a halo around his head and everybody worshipped him right from the... No one worshipped him. No one. John chapter 1. The Gospel of John. Chapter 1, verse 1. In the beginning was the world. The Word was where? With God. And who was that Word? The Word was God Himself. Verse 14, And the Word was made flesh. Not an angel. But the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us. And we beheld His glory as the glory of the only one begotten of the Father. He was the only one the Father created, nothing else. The Father created Jesus and left the entire creation to Jesus Himself. God the Father created only one. Thing, and that's Jesus' his son. He was the only, it says, the only begotten, the only born, the only created by his father. And he was full of grace and truth. First John, let's come to the epistle of John. First John, chapter 4, and verse 2. See what it says. Hereby you know the Spirit of God, and whisper that confesses that Jesus Christ is come into this flesh is of God. And even at that time people used to, uh, people doubted the existence and the deity of Christ. And John the Apostle, the only alive apostle at that time, is fighting against this system, is fighting against this, this, this evil belief that people doubted that, oh, just, did Jesus really come in the flesh? Did he really feel pain? Did he really feel heartaches and heartbreaks? Did he really feel the agony? of what we go through. John says, everyone that doubts that Jesus came in the flesh is of the devil. Verse 3, and every spirit that confesseth not that Jesus is come in the flesh is not of God. And this is that spirit of the Antichrist, whereof we have heard it, that it should come, and even now, already, it is in the world. It is in the world. Second John, I, I can read many more scriptures, I'm just... Uh, uh, closing this message in 2 John and chapter 7. For many deceivers are entered into this world who confess not that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. Even today, not very many people believe that Jesus indeed came in the flesh. Those are all the followers of the Antichrist. He said this is a deceiver and an Antichrist. So why it's so, it's so important to believe, say, that our our, 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 our Savior, our God became human. If He really didn't become human, then He didn't die for my sin. So the world is attacking these two facts. That Jesus is the Son of God and Jesus really took the form of a man. That Jesus really was, wasn't scourged for you. Oh no, He didn't die. He died some other death. But this is all stories that He died on a cross and He was flogged and He was scourged. It's all, it's all, it's all, it's all false. That's what people say. He didn't bleed on the cross. 
since he really did die on that old rugged cross. He really bled. He really said that, Father, it is finished. He really said that. And above all, he really did rise from the grave. And he is alive today. And because he lives, I can face tomorrow. Because he lives, all fear is gone. There's no fear in my life of what will happen tomorrow. Hebrews chapter 2. Hebrews chapter 2 and verse 14. For as much then as the children are partakers of flesh and blood, he also himself likewise took part of the same. What same? Flesh and blood. That through death, through death he had to die. Through death he might destroy him that has the power of death. Who had the power of death till that time? The devil. And Jesus absolutely destroyed and broke the teeth of the devil that day on Calvary. And he made himself, I made of the devil an open show. He made the, de the devil naked before this whole, before the universe. And the power of death that was in the hands of the devil, in the hands of the enemy, Jesus said, now the keys of death have been given to me. All authority, whether it be in heaven or on earth, has been given to me. I have overcome death. And he made an open show of the enemy and of the greatest power the enemy had, and that was death. Christ made an open show of that. Death has no more power over us. Yes, we all have to die physically, but because he was resurrected, we can be resurrected again. And that's why we can see our loved ones again. That's why we will be with them forever with the Lord. We will be forever with the Lord. There will be no parting over there. There will be no sorrows, no tears, no clouds in the sky. But we will be with our Savior Jesus forever. There will be no sickness, no sorrow, no pain. There will be no more death. Death itself will be cast into the lake of fire. The scripture says death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. There will be no more death. And Christ our Savior did that for us. He became the Son of Man. The Son of God became the Son of Man. There's a, there's a wonderful scripture that brings both of this together. This last scripture in Isaiah and chapter 9. Isaiah chapter 9 verse 6. This brings both God, the Son of God and the Son of Man together. It says for unto us a child is born. What child? That was Mary's firstborn child. There was a child born in Bethlehem in a manger. For unto us a child is born. And for us now, unto us again, a son is given. When was the son given? The son was given on Calvary. The child was born in Bethlehem. The son was given in Golgotha. You can see the Son of Man and the Son of God infused together in this verse. Again, 735 years before Christ was born. There will be a child. Behold, a virgin shall conceive. He came as a man. He lived as a man. He suffered as a man. He went through things as a man. And now, he is still there. He has still some of his humanity. He has his humanity still. He knows what we feel, how we feel. He knows sometimes we are frustrated. He knows sometimes we are dejected. He knows sometimes we are we are we become very weak. He knows it because he's experienced it. And that's what the scripture says in Hebrews that we have a high priest today. We have a high priest that can be touched with our weaknesses, with our infirmities. We have a high priest that can be touched with the feeling of our infirmities. And he won't mind when you come to him with your disbelief, with your with your with your sorrows, with your wounds. He doesn't he doesn't cast you away when you come to him saying, God, I really doubt if you can save me. He doesn't say, Go back. Yes, he is displeased when we doubt him, but he'll always help us. He'll always help us. That's what the, uh, that's what the disciple says, Lord, help my unbelief. 
Can we try that? Lord, I don't trust you too much today, but can you help me? Can we be honest with God? God, I don't trust you, but I know I trust I, 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 something that's gone into me today, Lord. Your word has instilled faith inside of me. And Lord, now I come to you with all my weaknesses. Lord, I come to you the way I am. Father, help me. And he'll help a child of God that's honest. Don't come with a spiritual facade on you, showing God something that you are not. Come to God the way you are. Because we have a high priest that can be touched with the feeling of our infirmities. He's there. He understands our pain, our grief, our sorrow. He understands because he became man. And he lived as a man. And he experienced every pain and every agony that we go through in our life. Isn't that wonderful? Isn't that significant? Thank God for this day. Thank God that the Son of God became the Son of Man. Because we sons of men can become the sons of God. Thank God for this day. Thank God for his, for his, for his, for his birth. Let's remember that why he came. Let's not forget. This is the reason for the season. This is the reason. This is what we should never forget. Yes, you get your family together. You have a good dinner or lunch or whatever it is. But pray. Pray. Don't forget. Don't forget to put Christ in this day. Let everything revolve around Christ and Christ alone. Let everything, whatever you do, do it as a service unto the Lord, not an eye service for people to see. Let, this, let us do it. If you help someone, help them as you are helping Jesus. As though Jesus is in need and you are helping that Jesus when he was on earth. Many people helped Jesus when he was in need. That's why he said, even if you give my disciple one glass of water, I will remember that. That's how considerate Jesus was. And he still is. But let's do it as a service to him. Not to please men. Not to get something from men. No, that's the most... It's better we don't do it then. Let's do it as a service unto God. And let's please our God. Amen. Amen. Thank God for this day. Thank God for this time. Thank the Lord for being with us today. I bring you greetings from Brother and Sister Senji. And I wish you a Merry Christmas on behalf of them. And as I said, don't forget the reason for this season. And let's pray for them also. Let's keep them in our prayers. Let's ask the Lord to cover them, protect them. And on behalf of the elders here in this church, I wish you all a very, very happy Christmas. Very, very happy Christ's birth. He was born. He indeed was born. The Son of God indeed became the Son of Man. Thank you all for being here. It looks a good congregation. We have a full congregation. You can just uh, uh, move it. And we really appreciate the Lord for this day, for this time. We appreciate you all coming here. I uh, just want you all to check yourself in the video and see how good you look. Because you may say, oh, the focus is always on Brother Joy. No, I want you all to receive today. You all to receive today. Smile. Don't act like me. As though you can't smile. Smile. Smile and may the Lord bless you all. Thank you for coming here. Thank you for your presence. We really appreciate you taking the time and coming here this uh, early in the morning. Uh, and I pray that you'll go back. Have a good day with your family. Pray and God bless you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. May, may, may the Lord have his hand upon you always. Christmas at Yapan. Christmas at the US Ahe, and Yapan at Bucket and Christmas तो आज अपन लोगों का ही साथ रखा रहता है तो अपन यह वचन तो ये बहुत इतना ही कि परमेश्वर ने नहीं तेज़ एक कुत्ते एक कुत्ते का पुत्र आला अपने सकी तो पाठ हो जाए अन्य तेज़ ये ना ते अपन जास्त महत्व देते जब कहीं मने कि आज तो जन्मला या दूसरी जन्मला या दूसरी जन्मला नहीं परंतु तू कश्यप सकी � 
आणि खरोखर हे आज हे हे जर आपण या शास्त्रावर विश्वास ठेवत आहोत जर आपण विश्वास ठेवलं तर खूप काय याच्यातलं आपल्याला समजणार आणि खरोखर यशाच्या ज्या पुस्तकात आपण पाहतो हे सर्व भविष्य परमेश्वराने अगोदरच त्याच्या संदेशाद्वारे म्हणजे यशाच्या आधारे लिहून ठेवलेले आणि आपण पाहतो हे जे सर्व संदेश त्यांनी जे प्रॉफेसिस संदेश दिलेले होते ते सर्व त्यांनी पूर्ण केलेले आहेत काही त्यांनी अजून सांगितलेले आहेत आणि ते होणार आहेत पुढं काही घडलेले आहेत आणि काही घडणार आहेत परंतु आपण आजपर्यंत बघितलेल्या या सर्व संदेश जे संदेश त्यांनी दिलेले आहेत प्रॉफेसी दिलेले आहेत येशू परमेश्वरांनी या त्याच्या संदेशांच्या द्वारे ते जवळजवळ सर्व काही परिपूर्ण झालेले आहे आणि हेच आपण आज बघत आहोत की कसा त्यांनी अगोदरच सांगितलं होतं की तो जन्मणार आहे तो पुत्र जन्मणार मी माझा पुत्र पाठवणार आहे हे आपण परत हे वचन परत मला हे हे मी वाचणार होतो त्यावेळेस आणि इथं परत त्यावेळेस आपल्या ब्रदर जॉईनी हे वाचलेले पण तुम्ही परत आपण एकदा सर्व जण वाचूया इथं नवव्या अध्यायात यशाच्या आणि सापं वचन आणि सुं हे खरोखर आपण लक्षात ठेवूया हे वचन आणि इथं सावं वचन आणि त्याचे नाव अद्भुत मंत्री पराक्रमी देव सनातन पिता शांतीचा अधिपती असे म्हटले जाईल कोण आहे हा आहे येशू ख्रिस्त आणि त्याने दिलेले त्यांनी आपल्याला मोकळं केलेले आज जर येशू ख्रिस्त नसला असता तर आपण कुठं असतो त्यांनी आपल्याला स्वातंत्र्य दिलेले त्यांनी आपल्याला मुक्त केलेले त्यांनी आपल्याला सर्व पापापासून मुक्त केलेले आणि हाच येशू ख्रिस्त त्यांनी इतकं सुंदर रित्या आपल्याला केलेलं आहे मी ह्याच्या पुढं जाऊन आपल्याला सर्वांना आज आता हा संदेश बहुतेक समजला असेल पण ह्याच्या पुढं मी जाऊन या येशू ख्रिस्तांनी या पृथ्वी तलावर बद्दल जॉईनी एक स्टेटमेंट केलं तो या पृथ्वी तलावर चालला ही वॉक्ट ऑन दिस अर्थ तो चालला खरोखर त्या इस्रायलमध्ये किती आशीर्वादित इस्रायल आहे कधीतरी जाऊन या जर मिळालं तर इकडं तिकडं जाण्यापेक्षा स्वित्झर्लंड किंवा दुबई बिबई इथे जाण्यापेक्षा मला वाटतं आपण इस्रायलमध्ये एक फटका मारून फेर फटका मारून घ्यावा असं तुम्ही म्हणू नका की तुम्ही गेला म्हणून सांगितलं नाही पण एक तुम्ही तिथं जायला पाहिजे ज्या ज्या ठिकाणी येशू ख्रिस्त तो चालला जिथं तिथं तो बसला जिथं जिथं त्यांनी कार्य केलेले हे सर्व जर आपल्याला जमत असेल तर जाऊया खरोखर हा आपला येशू ख्रिस्त म्हणजे आपला तारणार आहे पुष्कळ लोक याच्यावर विश्वास ठेवत नाही असे काही धर्म आहेत ते म्हणतात येशू ख्रिस्त पण हा एक संदेश होता कारण त्यांचा जो आहे तो पण संदेश होता म्हणून ते येशू ख्रिस्ताला पण त्याच्याबरोबर त्या लेवल आणून ठेवता की जीजस क्राईस्ट वॉज अ प्रॉफिट नो वी कॅन नॉट से दॅट वी कॅन प्रूव्ह थ्रू द म्हणजे या यशाच्या पुस्तकातनं आपण हे सिद्ध करू शकतो की ते तो देवाचा पुत्र आहे आणि देवानी त्याला पाठवलेला आहे आणि ह्याच्या पुढं पण मी जाऊ शकतो की देवानी त्याला पुत्र आपल्या तारणासाठी पाठवले परंतु त्याच्यापेक्षा जास्त तो आज आपल्यासाठी एक मुख्य याजक आहे हाय प्रिस्ट तो मुख्य याजक आहे आणि आपल्याला माहितीये ह्या सर्व जुन्या कराडात आपण सर्व अभ्यास केलेला आहे की कसा त्या पवित्र आणि पवित्र अशा जागेत कोण जात होत मुख्य याजक आपल्या पापासाठी आपलं अर्पण घेऊन तो तिथं जायचा जेणेकरून आपल्याला क्षमा कर मिळेल आणि तो एकटाच तिथं जायचा आतमध्ये परंतु हा येशू ख्रिस्त आपल्यासाठी आज मुख्य याजक झालेला आहे आणि त्यांनी जे वधस्तंभावर रक्त वाहिलेले ते रक्त घेऊन जाऊन त्यांनी आपल्या सर्व पापांसाठी तो परमेश्वराकडे गेला आणि आपल्या पापासाठी त्यांनी क्षमा मागितले आणि तो एकदाच गेला वारंवार नाही कारण त्यावेळेस वारंवार जावं लागेल इथं मला वाटतं इब्रू खरा इब्री लोकास पत्रात थोडस वचन आपण इथं वाचूया मला वाटतं इथे इब्रू इब्री लोकास पत्रामध्ये नववा अध्याय आणि जर आपण इथं वाचलं अकरा अकरा पासून किंवा बारा पासून नाही राहू द्या ते तुम्ही घरी जाऊन वाचा अकरा पासून पण मी इथं चौदावं वचन वाचतो तर ज्याने सार्वकालिक आत्म्याकडून 
निष्कलंक अशा स्वतः देवाला अर्पिले ते आजक लोक निष्कलंक कोकराला अर्पण करायचे आणि ते रक्त घेऊन जायचे जे आपल्या पापासाठी होते आणि नंतर त्याने त्या ख्रिस्ताचे रक्त तुमच्या विवेक भावास जिवंत देवाची सेवा करण्यासाठी निर्जीव कर्मापासून किती विशेष करून शुद्ध करेल त्यांनी ते केलेले ते मोठं काम केलेलं आणि त्याच्यासाठी आजचा दिवस आपल्याला महत्व आहे की तू येशू ख्रिस्त माझ्यासाठी तो आला त्याचं दिवस माहीत नाही त्याचं काय वेळ माहीत नाही पण आपल्याला तो जन्मलेला आहे ते माहिती आहे आणि त्याच्यासाठी आपण आज त्याचा गौरव करूया त्याचं उत्सु त्याचा हे करूया प्रियानो आणि नंतर कारण इथं नंतर परत अजून एक वचन आहे सव्वीसा वचन त्याच अध्यात कारण असे असे तर त्याला जागेच्या जगाच्या स्थापनेपासून पुष्कळदा दुःख सोख सोसावं लागले असते पण आता काळाच्या समाप्तीत या स्वतःच्या यज्ञाने पाप दूर करण्यासाठी एकदाच प्रकट झालेला आहे तो येशू ख्रिस्त आहे तो प्रकट झालेला आहे आणि ज्याप्रमाणे माणसास एकदाच म्हणजे त्यानंतर न्याय ठरणे हे निमून दिले त्याप्रमाणे अठ्ठावीस आवतन त्याप्रमाणे ख्रिस्त पुष्कळांची पापे वाहून नेण्यास एकदाच अर्पिला गेलेला आहे तो येशू ख्रिस्त आज माझ्यासाठी महत्वाचा आहे म्हणून त्या येशू ख्रिस्ताचं आपण स्मरण करूया की जो माझ्यासाठी या पृथ्वी तलावर आला आणि त्यांनी ते आपलं तिथं त्याग केलेला जीव दिला आपला अर्पण केलेला आहे जेणेकरून माझं तारण व्हावं आणि त्याची वाट पाहणाऱ्यास तो पापविरही तारणासाठी दुसऱ्यांना दिसेल त्यांनी आपल्याला केलेले प्रियानो तर आपण परमेश्वराची उपकारस्तुती करूया आणि परमेश्वराचं गौरव करूया की अशा देवाचा पुत्र जो परमेश्वराकडून पाठवला गेलेला होता त्यांनी आपल्याला आज मुक्त केले आणि त्या ह्याच्यात आपण देवाचं गौरव करूया देवाचा आनंद करूया आणि त्याच्यासाठी आपण परमेश्वराची उपकारस्तुती करूया आज तुम्हाला सर्वांना या ख्रिसमसच्या शुभेच्छा या एल्डर्स पास्टर आणि ब्रदर सेनजी सिस्टर सेनजी आणि मंडळीच्या वतीने प्रत्येकांना या ख्रिसमसच्या शुभेच्छा आहेत आणि ज्याप्रमाणे बदल जॉईनी सांगितलं की जस्ट गो एन्जॉय युअर सेल्फ टेक द एन्जॉयमेंट एव्हरीथिंग इट इज नॉट दॅट वी आर डुईंग इट बिकॉज द वर्ल्ड इज डुईंग सगळं जग करते नाही परंतु आपल्याला आज येशू क्रिस्ताचं महत्व माहिती आहे आणि त्या आधारे अपन परमेश्वरा की उपकार सुखी करूं आशुक्रिस्ता पर उपकार